We're recording. So, would you like to hear our story? It's not our story. It's John Pat and Bridget's story. They told us what it was like growing up 80 years ago. I wasn't here for the interview. So I know nothing about it. Where were you born? Born here in Rathmull. I was born in Glen Column, April 1930. Yeah, 31, my March, March 31. What was it like growing up there? Oh, fun, plenty of sport. <laughs> We played football at school, most, mostly in uh, most sport. It's nearly all football about that month. We were on a farm, so you never were able to get the job or something. <laughs> Where did you go to school? Rathmullen School. Castle School in Glen Conway. What was it like there? Oh, good, nice. We all went walked to school together. How long of a walk was it? 25 months. Well, to walk up and the same to come back again. Did you get very tired when you were Rain walking? Rain and blowing blow or snow and we always walked to school. No transport that time. Did you get very tired or get used no, to it? No, we weren't tired. We never were tired walking. When you're young, you're not tired. You don't, you don't get tired. Only when you're old, you get tired easy. You jump over the moon. Were the teachers nice? Yeah, there were three teachers and sometimes four. Yeah, one of the teachers in the last moment taught us to dance. Uh, Kaylee dancing. But it's all in the way, but you put me in the way of dancing anyway. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> what was your job when you finished school? I'd come home here and my father would get me a job. Out in the farm. Oh, working with horses. I learned very early in life to play with horses. Things like that. But then the cows and put them out. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of work. When did you just get tractors on the farm? Yeah, it was all horses up until nineteen fifties. The tractors came in in the fifties. Bridget, what was your job when you finished school? Nurse. Yeah, I enjoyed it every bit of it. Yeah. How did you meet each other? Meet each other. How did we meet each other? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I could see it probably dancing. Bridget would come to the dances in the Rocket Hall in Mulford. On a Sunday night, we used to come a car load of them from you know, two hospitals. And I was a, a dancing man, as I told you before, that's where I learned to dance in the school in Rathmullen. I've been dancing, dancing crazy since that. <laughs> what were the differences between now and when you grew up? The big difference, you walked everywhere when, when I was growing up. Now you have a car sitting at the door to take you no matter where you want to go. Big difference. We we'll walked to Mass on a Sunday. Tell us about your involvement with St. Catherine's Church. Um, there was no, no electricity in it, and, and we formed a meeting, and uh, all the locals helped. We got on the power on it, and got the water on it. We got on well, we got, raised all the money for the central heating and all that. Local, local, all local. Do you remember the train in Donegal? Yes, I remember the train very well because my mother used to go shopping in Derry. And there was no transport in there, can I? She's about to just cross and they fall. But the way travelled on was only for a foot, foot people yeah. and no cars. Got the train up into Derry and the local train back again the same. When they walk then from Rathmullen up here and carry all the, your messages and everything you bought. No transport. That would be in my teens before I was even ever on Letterkenny. There were no transport, mm. no buses, no yeah. cars. The travelling was, well, you had to change so many places. You changed in Stranorla and changed in Donegal down, and you were all day. Went from Stranorla to Kelly Beggs. Mm. Right. So we still had 18 miles to do from Kelly Beggs into Glen Conquer. The winter day wasn't so nice. <laughs> Bought my first car in 1957, 170 pounds, so a year and five months old. What new technology do you like? Well, oh, I'm happy enough with it. Well, I like the television and the transport to the cars, the transport is great. And I like the television, radio, 
like a uh, flat coal, which started me off. I would always go to the flat coal. That's a whole week. It, it varied from one town to another, like every year. And I would spend the whole week in it when I got a camera and filmed everything we could on. And then play it in the winter time when you'd come back here. That, that, that's what started me off on the, on the camera. Do you have any advice for young people growing up today? Yes, keep away from drugs and drink. And then two things, if you can manage them two things, you're, you're helping yourself well, but make sure you do not take drugs or drink. That's, uh, don't forget that. School and keep your education, get educated anyway. After that, to look after yourself. And that's the end of our interview. It's not our interview, it's John Barton Briggs' interview. They told us what it was like growing up 80 years ago. Wait, wait, did, did we not already do this? And that's the end of our interview. It's not our interview, it's John Barton Briggs' interview. They told us what it was like growing up 80 Guys, years ago. Guys, come on. And that's the stop, end of our stop, interview. It's not stop our joking interview. around! It's not our interview. They told Wait, us what it was like growing up 80 years ago. And that's the end of our interview. It's not our interview. What are you guys doing? John Patton Bridget's interview. They told us what it was like growing up 80 years ago. And that's the end of our interview. What am I going to do? It's not our interview. It's John Patton Bridget's interview. They told us what it was like growing up 80 years ago. And that's the end of our interview. It's not our interview. I'm stuck in a time loop. My dream is John Patton Bridget's interview. They told us what it was like growing up 80 years ago. And that's the end of our interview. It's not our interview. Guys, stop!